Hey, welcome back. So from now on, we're going to create an actual project to utilize everything we've learned so far in our OOP uh, series. So the next following videos are going to be all about an actual application. Now in this application, what we want to look at is to create a user login because this is uh, the easiest thing for people to understand. So that's why I'm going for that. So we're going to need to log in and then we're going to need to be able to log out, of course. And then we're going to need to be able to, to read from the database and update users. And of course, create users, which is login or sign up actually so login log out and then the sign up something like this so this is what i'm going to concentrate on so how to deal with the database database connections logging in logging out signing up etc in object oriented format using the concepts that we learned in the series okay so let's uh, begin and see how we can go about doing something like this Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to create a few files. I'm going to right click in my folder and create a few new files. So the first one is going to be index.php, of course. So I'll say index.php. That'll be the index page, the home page of our website, and then a new file again. Now, this one is going to be um, init.php, like so. So this one will contain all the initialization information. So I'm just going to put some PHP tags there. No worries. And then I'm going to create a folder now. So new folder. I'm going to call this one classes. It's going to contain all the classes that we need to use. So there are a few classes that we need to create. So I'll right click on classes and create a new file. Put some PHP tags save that this one is going to be db.php this is the database class now i'm going to rename this from db <clears throat> excuse me i want to add .class.php just so we can know it's actually a class and then i'll create a new one again just put some php tags and of course we're going to need a way to communicate with the users table so I'm going to use the users dot class. Oh, wait a minute. Class, uh, I think user, not users, just user dot class dot PHP. I think it's better when the classes are singular. So I'll save that. So the final class we're going to need is a session class. So let me create one new file here put my PHP tags, save that one. And then this one will be session.class.php. That's what will enable us to uh, deal with session information and save that. So we have a database class, we have a users class, we have a session class. So I think this is all the information we need, but then let's close the classes folder Let's create a few more files here in the OOP folder itself. So new file. And this one is going to be logout.php. And then let's create one more file. This one is going to be uh, sign up. Sign up.php. And then let me create one more and I'm going to call this one uh, login.php like that. So we have login, logout. So that's login, logout, and sign up. And what else are we missing on the index page? No. Right. So if we need any more files as we go, we're going to add more. So let me just close all the files here so I can begin my coding. So the first thing I'm going to begin with is the init.php because this one is the one that it does the initialization. So to begin with, I want to create a function that can uh, is going to auto load our classes because I don't want to always have to say include for our classes. 
So I just want to use this function SPL autoload register. So put your semicolon there and let's add a function here, supply a function as a, a parameter there, an argument. And then in here we have to write class name because we're going to receive that. And then let's put some space for more code. So what I want to do is once I receive a class name, I simply need to include that file. So I'm going to include the file, which is inside class name, and then concatenate the dot class uh, dot PHP at the very end there. But we shouldn't forget that these files are inside a folder named classes. So I'm going to write classes like so slash and then the class name and then dot class dot php that should do it okay and then here i'm going to define a few variables here so i'm going to do a definition now in this file the init.php this is where you put everything that must be available throughout the website because this file will be part of every page that is loaded so I'm going to say define and in here I want to define my host for these are database uh, details. So I'm going to say DB host local host like so. And then I'm going to duplicate this a few times. The next one is going to be DB user. And then we're going to have DB password. And then I'm going to have DB name the database name there so what are we going to name our database we just name it oop for simplicity i'm going to put underscore db and then we'll have a password here which is empty now if your system your mysql has a password there you have to make sure that you add that password there instead and the username so if you didn't put a username and password, that's when you use root and an empty password and leave that local host there. So let's add some comments as well for good practice. Let's say uh, database details, something like this. We can do it this way to make it look more like that. Database details. And then uh, I don't think I need that. So let me just copy that and put here autoload function. Like so. Okay. So the reason we use define and put these values in constants is because a constant is available. It's like a global variable. It's available everywhere. And since these values don't really change throughout the website, it's better to use constants. Okay, so save that and we are done with the init file. Now, the reason I didn't put this information in the index.php here, because I could easily have done that in the index page, is because sometimes you'll be, um, you'll be accessing the login page and not the index page. So if I put something here, it won't show, it won't be available in the login page. What I could do, uh, is copy this stuff and put it in the index page and then copy it in every page as well. That could work. The only problem is if I decide to change something uh, on the file itself, like how this thing works, for example, then I'll have to go in through all the files and change everywhere where I copied this code. So it's never a good idea to repeat your code. So every time you're repeating your code, just know there's something wrong. You're doing something wrong. You have to copy that code, put it in a file of its own, and then simply include it everywhere that you need it, uh, preferably as a function. So here, what we need now is to just go into the index page and just say include in the index page like so. And then we're going to say init.php like that. So everywhere where I need init, where I need this to run, which is pretty much on every page, I'll have to start the page with this include. And so the advantage of this is whenever I change the, anything here, it will change on every page that I've included it without having to actually check what is on that page. 
All right, so now that we are at this point, we are good with the index page. Let me go, let's actually close the page here. Let me go to the classes now. Let's create a few classes before we can begin to actually use them. So I'm going to begin with the database class because we need to be able to connect to the database. So what I shall do here is create the class with a class name like that. I'm going to call it DB just for easy uh, coding, right? You can call it database, that's entirely up to you. And then I'm going to put a few protected values here. These are protected because they won't be accept, uh, accessed from outside, but from the inside only. So I want to be able to have a connection, that's one. And I want to be able to have a query, that's two. And I also want to be able to have, um, what's the other thing? So the there's the query, and then I think I'm going to have a query type as well, something like this. Okay, so we'll add other things as we go. And also I will need to have an instance. So instance here, like so. Now instance and connection will have to be static and I will explain why uh, a little bit later. Or maybe I can do a brief explanation. It's because we're going to be accessing them from a static function as well. So if I'm using a static function, I cannot access these uh, object properties like this. So if I assign a property like this one, I can't access it if I have a function, uh, a static function. So I'm going to just say uh, public static function like so, and then give it a name. This one will be, um, I'm going to call it table like so. Okay, so if I, the reason I am doing this and using static instead of just public function is because I want to be able to access this in a static manner. So what exactly do I mean? So let me explain here a little bit. Normally, when you want to use a class, you're going to need to do something like this. You're going to say maybe db is equal to new database or new db in our case because the class is called db like that and then eventually that's when you say db and then you run a function maybe a query or something like this okay so i want to skip this process right here db is going to new db so i want this process to happen automatically okay and every time i create a, an instance like this one i don't want further down in my uh, program to create a second DB instance. I just want to use one instance of each of these. The result that I'm looking for here is to be able to do something like, let's say I want to access the database table. All I need to do is say DB and do that. I access it in a static manner and then say table the way I have created that table and then specify maybe the table is users like so. And then I'm just going to say uh, table and then I say select something like that. And then if I want to get uh, all, I just say all like that. And then it's going to return the data that I want. Or if, for example, I want to select it using a where clause, I can do something like uh, where and then I put my where clause there, right? Or if I want to use uh, access something from the user class, I'll do this user and write action, something like that, and then do, uh, I don't know, get one or something, get one, okay, something like that. So there's, this is more human readable because you see it's the user class and then there's an action to be performed and that action is to get one user, okay or you can say something like get by ID, something like that, and then you supply your ID in there, something like this. So this is what I am going for. And the reason I like this is because I don't have to do DB is equal to new DB. This is done internally like this. So this is a system that uh, Laravel actually uses. 
a PHP framework in case you don't know it. And I kind of like that system. So this is what I'm trying to duplicate here. Okay, so let's continue so that you can see how I did mention this kind of chaining in a previous episode here where I said for this chaining to happen, every one of these should be able to return an instance of this class. And we're going to see how to do that. 